Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Monday live stream. A lot of things going on. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, there's some good news. And the good news, actually, it's quite plentiful. There's a lot of good news going on. Uh, Tether remains a dollar. I'm just kidding. Tether, if we take a look at uh, the market cap, it's at an all time high, which means that for stable coins, they are doing their jobs and they are part of the ecosystem. We can see that right now. I mean, it's just massive, almost 120 billion. Yeah. Geez, 120 billion uh, for a market cap, uh, unbelievable. And also, if we take a look at uh, supply and profit or loss, it's the Bitcoin percentage of supply and profit or loss. And of course, we're using uh, Ben's website in the Cryptoverse, links in the description, 10% off the first month. But we can just see that uh, as of today, percent of supply and loss, in loss, 4%. Percent of supply and profit, almost 96%. So we have done a pretty good job. Congratulations to you for holding on, especially to all to the uh, Bitcoiners. So it's looking pretty good, but you have to understand what goes up doesn't go up forever. We have little pullbacks and that's natural, that's normal. If we take a look at that Bitcoin hash rate, which is what uh, we get for all the Bitcoin miners uh, doing their Bitcoin mining operations to solve mathematically algorithms to see if they can mine Bitcoin, we're at an all time high. Hash rate is 791 exahashes, hash rate. And it is not going down. What this means is that when you have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Bitcoin miners, but uh, as you guys are on the network and you're all competing for Bitcoin, it becomes exponentially harder and the hash rate goes up uh, quite a bit. And when that happens, that means that you have to put in more power, which is more electricity. And of course you have overhead. So what happens there? You gotta pay the bills. So when we do those things, we see what happens with Bitcoin that naturally what goes up must come down. Nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes sideways forever. And we're at a little bit of a pullback again, 67,000. I'm pretty sure a couple of months ago, we all would have loved to have seen that. So today, yes, it is a red day, but it is natural. It is the progression and it is where we're actually at. I have always said, I still stick to this, that nothing's really going to happen until after the, uh, presidential election here in the States, which we've got, what, 15, 16 days to go. So let's get that out of the way. And then we can get to the bull run, the real bull run, not this little Mickey Mouse stuff. So that's what we have for today. Let's get into the thumbnail and title of today's video. And it takes a look at, and I believe things are, not that, that they're just scared, but they don't understand it. This was a great article from Cointelegraph. Governments must tax or ban Bitcoin to maintain deficits. This isn't just made up by Cointelegraph. This is actually from the Minneapolis Federal Reserve. And uh, I got to tell you, not a great picture uh, for Cointelegraph. Looks like Bitcoin's coming in the teabag, somebody. I don't know. So we have here a recent research paper by the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis suggests that assets such as Bitcoin should be taxed or banned to help governments maintain deficit. Let me say that again. Bitcoin should be taxed or banned to help governments maintain deficits. Well, how big is our deficit, Rob, in the United States? It's enormous. I'll get to that in a second. Bitcoin introduces, and this is from the paper, Bitcoin introduces a balanced budget trap, an alternative state where the government is forced to balance its budgets. The Fed wrote, I gotta tell you, not a bad thing for us to balance the budget. I don't know if you're, you're older like me, but you can remember when Bill Clinton almost balanced the federal budget, almost did it in the 90s. And now here we are with a massive deficit and it's, it's only gonna get worse. So in the paper, it states a legal prohibition against Bitcoin can restore unique implementation of permanent primary deficits and so can a tax on Bitcoin. So that they wanna just outright ban it or tax the living tar out of it. And that's usually what I think is gonna happen. The United States, and talking about deficits, the United States has amassed $35 trillion in total accumulated national debt. Yay. Still the primary deficit, the annual gap between spending and tax revenue is around $1.8 trillion, which means either we're going to have to start taxing like crazy or printing like crazy. Which do you think the government's going to do? Head of Digital Asset Research of Van Eck, Matthew Siegel, Comment on the paper said that Minneapolis Fed had joined the ECB, the European Central Bank, in its attack on Bitcoin, stating that this, they have fantasies about legal prohibition and extra taxes on Bitcoin to ensure government debts remain the only risk-free fee -free security. 
On October 12th, the European Central Bank released a paper claiming that older Bitcoin holders are profiting at the expense of newer holders. It argued that the asset should be regulated to prevent its price from rising or banned outright. Now, before we go on, let me just say this. We don't need governments to step in. We don't need the approval of the government to make Bitcoin work. We're doing pretty damn good so far, even with Gary Gensler in his position at the SEC. I get that. I understand that. And I've always said this before. We don't need the government. It is inevitable, but it does slow things down quite a bit. And I can see things happening depending on who is in the White House moving forward. But we'll see. European Central Bank Senior Management Advisor Jurgen Schaff, I think I said that right, states that non-holders should recognize that Bitcoin's rise is fueled by wealth redistribution at their expense. He said before, I think there are compelling reasons to advocate for policies that curb Bitcoin's growth or even eliminate it. And what this is referring to, there was a paper, I think I linked this in the description, the distributional consequences of Bitcoin. And essentially what they're saying, which is kind of, it's not laughable. There are some, there are some positive parts of this or something, there are some parts to it that make you actually think about it. This redistribution of wealth, and we can see that actually. Actually, let me pull this up. This is Bitcoin treasuries and it's bitcointreasuries.com. And you can see just where Bitcoin is being held and in what parts. ETFs, I didn't know this, wow. ETFs are now almost five and a half percent. Countries own two and a half percent and they don't really want to hold it. They just hold it because they they had to confiscate it. Public companies, 1.7, private 1.7 as well. Bitcoin mining, not even a half. And D, wow, DeFi, 0 0.7, what? Bitcoin DeFi, interesting. I got to talk to uh, the guys over at Core, and then we can just kind of break this down. But that is a, a a quite a shockingly high percentage. And of course, ETFs those are, you know, held by the Black Rocks, the Fidelities. And actually, the custody is done mostly by Coinbase uh, for the majority of it. But that five point four percent are for individual investors, institutions, and uh, even retail. So for ETFs to say, well, they hold it all. No, but you can see that there is a lot of concentration of Bitcoin going to the hands of the few. Tell me where I'm wrong here, because that's just the truth. I mean, can you imagine? Let's just say tomorrow that Bitcoin becomes the reserve currency of the world. Do you think the governments are, are going to be like, well, that's cool, 10%, you know, <laughs> are in the hands of these individuals or, you know, these countries, these public companies? I got a bad feeling that maybe this is going to be like uh, gold when there was one was confiscated in the 30s and 40s. I could be wrong, but uh, yeah, there are parts of this that uh, do make me sit back and pause and think. And then this is actually from the European Central Bank from the paper itself. It says while the current market value of Bitcoin is in the range of 50 to 60,000, it could be argued that any price for Bitcoin is equally plausible, including 10 million or more as none of these prices have any particular economic justification or imputed basis, which is incorrect. I mean, there is uh, many a points to be said for that. It is, it is electricity, it is power, it is decentralized, and uh, it actually does have a good price appreciation moving forward. And depending on how you take a look at it, if it is scarce, I say that it's totally finite. There's only so much that can be actually put out in the world. 21 million is the last stand. So I just found it interesting that the ECB comes out and says that, I mean, I thought I was moon boyish, but 10 million, I mean, they got me on that one. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section, but you can see where like the European Central Bank, the Minneapolis Reserve, where they're going, where their kind of thought process is as far as Bitcoin. And I gotta tell you, I mean, it's it's scary, but it's exciting at the same time. I mean, we're making so much progress in such a short amount of time. I mean, governments and presidential candidates have to talk about Bitcoin. And then this was just a couple of days ago, uh, five to be exact, uh, Italy, just like what we were talking about here in the actual uh, statement from the ECB and the uh, Minneapolis Reserve. Now we've got Italy saying, you know what, that's true. We're not going to ban it, but we're going to tax the hell out of it. Italy to raise capital gains tax on Bitcoin to 42% from 26%. This right here, Italy I is 61%. That's, that's just the, 
the difference between 26 and 42. Because when I first read that, I'm like, what? They're going from 26 to 42 to 61. No, no, no. It's just 61% hike from 26%. So imagine this. Almost half of the gains that you get in Bitcoin are going to have to go to the government. Well, there's a reason why they just laid that out. So again, I just, I look at this and I'm like, I think that the governments really are starting to get it and they're a little bit scared. And to prove my point, this is from the Department of Defense. The US Department of Defense places Bitcoin software thesis under security review. If you don't know what that is, that's a book. It's a book by Major Jason Lowry. It's called Software, Noble Theory on the Power Projection and National Strategic Significance of Bitcoin itself. And they yanked it. It's currently unavailable. Why? Now, this one was interesting. Check this out. Jason Lowry's book, Software, blah, 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 has been retroactively subjected to a security and policy review by the DOD, the Department of Defense. As a U.S. Space Force, that's a thing, officer and research fellow at MIT, Lowry explores in software the concept of Bitcoin's proof of work mechanism as a form of cyber power projection. Again, I think the governments are starting to get it. The retroactive nature of this review suggests that the DOD may have concerns about sensitive information within the book that could impact national security or reveal protected insights. And I got to tell you, when I hear this, I just remember that the campaign promises that are being made right now on both sides. And I'm just thinking to myself, man, maybe this will be a pretty big uh, melt up. But I don't know. I I can't give you price predictions. I don't know where things are going, but I just find this very interesting that you had, again, Minneapolis Reserve, ECB, now the Department of Defense going through here. Maybe it's nothing, maybe it's something. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, before we get into the Q&A, uh, Elon Musk is back on the, on the bandwagon as he gets into crypto little by little. So this was a tweet from Brian Armstrong, and he says, hey, Massachusetts residents should vote for John Deaton over crypto Karen, Senator Warren, Elizabeth Warren. Crypto holders in Massachusetts should realize that Senator Warren is the one who got Gary Gensler his job and encouraged him to unlawfully try and kill the crypto industry. And he's absolutely right. And Elon Musk says, yes, that's true. One more reason that I like Elon. And there is this, there was, this is the second debate. I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't watch the second one because he crushed her so bad in the first. I'm like, well, can he do any better? I didn't watch the whole thing, but this is a minute and 42. Uh, you tell me how well he did. Obviously, I'm biased. I want John to win, you know, but uh, we'll see. I want you to listen to this. This is, a, like I said, a minute and a half. It's, uh, it's brutal. If you're on the Elizabeth Warren campaign team, I, I don't, you don't want to watch this again. It's probably hard enough. Take a listen. John Deaton, you have never held elected office before. Why are you starting off with a run for U.S. Senate as opposed to, say, running for a job in the state legislature or even the Bolton Select Board? Because we're in crisis. We have illegal immigration bankrupting the state. We have an opioid addiction killing Americans. We have a debt crisis. The government's going over a cliff. No one's talking about it. And we have inflation that's pricing Americans out of the economy. But the single greatest crisis we face is a crisis of leadership. You have people like Senator Warren, so divisive. They sit back and they fuel the division amongst us. And that has to change. You know, Senator Warren was asked a question about why is Trump so popular? Why is this close, this race close? You know what she said? She threw her hands up in disgust and said, I just don't get it. I think it's your job, Senator, to get it because 74 million Americans aren't racist and xenophobes. These are good people who think the family, the, the country's headed in the wrong direction. And I realize because I don't support President Trump that maybe I'm the right messenger for these elites to get them to understand. So here you go. First, every member of Congress, take a look in the mirror because you're part of the problem. And maybe people are tired of foreign wars. Maybe they're tired of working 50 hours a week and can't pay their bills or being shocked at the grocery store when they get their energy bill or that their parks are becoming crime scenes. Or maybe they feel betrayed, Senator, that they watch billions of dollars be spent on migrants who just got here. But there's, we can't save Neshoba. We can't save Carney. We don't have any for uh, wildfires, and we don't have any for hurricane victims. Maybe they're in disbelief that in today's America, it seems far better to be an illegal migrant than a homeowner in North Carolina who's been here all your life. Senator Maybe Warren, now you get it, Senator. 30s. John Deaton. Brutal. So uh, let me know what you about that in the comments, and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. I'm going to talk about it's time-sensitive.